Hi, and welcome to the Business Spotlight series. I'm Martin Bailey, and joining me today is Joanna Knight, a partner from Knight Partnership. Welcome, Joanna, and uh, thank you very much for taking the time to come along and talk to us today. How are you? You're very welcome. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, things are good. Things are good. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. It's a good start. It's a good start to our chat. So, look, why do we why do we move this along? Why do we start it off by you telling me, you know, tell us a bit about you and, and what you do and who you are. Okay, that sounds good. Well, I dare I say it, I've been working for over 40 years, which is scary when you put those numbers in <laughs> together. But I, I I started life working in very much in marketing and sales. Um then I moved to the Bright Lights of London, and yeah. it, and at that time, when we we're back in the 80s, um, marketing and public relations was very much a growth industry. And so I wanted to be part of one of these creative agencies in London. It all sounded exciting, and I moved to central London, um, spent most of the time in wine bars with big hair and wide shoulder pads, yeah. and then um, real life kicked in, and I moved to Suffolk. Because uh, I met my husband, <laughs> and so, suddenly so, getting there's a, big, there's, a big, there's a big difference. Was... There's a huge difference between London and Suffolk. Yes, indeed. Um, but uh, and then my husband had fairly recently sold a media agency, and so we set up our own agency. This is back in now. We're into the early nineties, and um, we gathered a lot of clients working in the office furniture field. Um, I also, um, part of what we were doing is I became editor of a couple of magazines about office workplace wow. um, because I had a background initially in journalism and it's something I've always enjoyed was writing. And then by the early 2000s, I was invited by one of my clients to take part in a management buyout um, and we formed a, a large furniture company, uh, a dealership fundamentally, i.e. selling other people's furniture. Um, I became sales and marketing director. And at that time, we were real trailblazers in environmental responsibility um, relating to furniture. And you might think, well, furniture, why, why the hell has that got anything to do with environmental responsibility? And the reality is, is because most people, when they no longer leave their furniture, it's all thrown away. And typically at that time was all ended up in landfill. Right. So we set up an operation that undertook on-site repairs and maintenance of furniture and equipment. So I'm not just talking chairs. We're talking everything that you would find in an office building if you turned it upside down, anything that would fall out. Mm -hmm. um, we And that was hugely successful. We also sold a lot of new furniture as well. I hasten to add, for example, we supplied all the furniture into Terminal 5 for British Airways. Um, we worked with big government contracts. Um, we supplied all the furniture to the Ministry of Defence. Um, it was exciting times. Mm -hmm. um, and then for lots of different reasons, um, I left. And then more recently, I went back to studying because sustainability, um, certainly in the sort of second decade of the 2000s, it dropped off the agenda. The economic climate became very, very difficult. And so people were just interested in price and the office furniture market did what it tends to always do is have a race to the bottom on price. <laughs> and, which, um, was never, which was never a healthy outcome. No, no, never good. Uh, it's still happening a bit now, I have to tell you. Um, but nonetheless, sustainability has always interested me. And so I went back to studying and then about, I guess, four, four and a half years ago, I started out again on my own. Um, as a sustainability consultant, but in particular within the workplace environment. Um, I also still do some marketing for clients. Um, and yeah, I'm really busy, loving it because I like working for myself. I'm a bit of a maverick. Um, so very difficult to employ me. <laughs> and just enjoy being me. Um, in the meanwhile, in all this mayhem, uh, my husband and I decided to start an art gallery. So we also own an art gallery in Bury St Edmunds, which is also great because I guess it's all part of creativity, isn't it? And yes, yes. I do the marketing for the gallery and my husband, as I called yeah. it, call it, is the boots on the ground. 
Okay, so 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 he's doing all the hard work, is what you're trying. Yeah, to say. I just swung around saying, "Oh, I own an art gallery." <laughs> <laughs> Sounds delightful. With your look, with your big shoulder pads, big hair, and off the way. Oh, body. I had to get rid of the shoulder pads. <laughs> <laughs> so, so in terms of the, the business you've got now, so you do a bit of marketing, sustainability. Which which one are you doing more? Is it more sustainability work that you're doing, or are you still doing quite more sustainability work? Huge amounts of sustainability because there is now a big driver, particularly the large corporate companies, legally have to report their carbon right. footprint. Yeah, and, um, they, and so... they've been tasked with a reduction as well over a certain period. Correct. Of time. Um, and then if you know, I'm working primarily in the office furniture marketplace. Um, if they hold large contracts with government, then they're also in order to win those contracts, they have to be reporting and reducing their carbon impact. I've also set up a group, a uh, co-founder of a group called the Sustainable Design Collective, which is a group of architects and designers working in office workplace. And we meet as a think tank to talk about everything related to sustainability. Mm -hmm. And we need to remember sustainability is not just carbon impact. No, it's no. about the three Ps, people, planet and profit. Yeah, totally and right. how do you make those three all marry up? Yeah. Okay, so we've got we've got the three P's, the five P's, the six, but there's, there's lots of lots of P's out there, isn't there? So, <laughs> Let's not yeah, go but, there. <laughs> but, 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 you, but you are right. People, planet, profit. That makes a lot of sense. That that resonates. Yeah. So, look in terms of your business. So, you, you obviously in favor of sustainability. You come from a sort of you know fifty million pound. There's an element of corporate background there because a fifty yeah. million pound business is fairly corporate. Um. What were the challenges for you, or what? Yeah, well, I suppose what were the challenges for you when you set your business up, coming from well, that corporate I am now. world? Yeah, coming coming from the corporate world to where you are now. What what were the challenges that you sort of had to come overcome? Well, I guess the first challenge is finding business, <laughs> yeah. um, and I find that people do business with people, and so it's about relationship building. Um, an advantage of age and experience is that I know a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and so I needed to build my reputation and people may know, know me more in a marketing and sales capacity. So I had to demonstrate my knowledge and capabilities within the sustainability arena. So it helped the fact that my previous business had been very much a groundbreaker in that field, yeah. but nonetheless, or trailblazer, or however you want to call it, um, and I went back to doing a lot of journalism. Um, so getting articles published in trade magazines, right. um, public speaking. So getting my name out there so that people knew that I did know what I was talking about um, and, and, and really sort of building those. I hate the word networking, but yeah, building my network. Okay. Yeah, no, and, and, and that's absolutely essential thing when you start building a network because you're right. Is it, though I think they're saying going, it's not what you know, it's who you know. That is so true. And, and that's really sad for younger people starting out because, you know, you think, well, where do I start? But you always have to start somewhere. Well, you, um, you do. But what it, what it does is it amplifies the importance of relationship building, doesn't it? And, 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 and seeing that as so it's more than just you, it's more than just your business. It, it, it's got to be the, the relationship you build with a greater, well, it's with the outside world. It also demonstrates the importance of um, credibility and reliability because you let people down, that stays with you. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't matter whether you're just providing a product rather than selling you as a service, shall we say. Um, everything, in my mind, is based on reputation because I know it's a very trite expression, but, you know, reputation is hard to build and very easy to break. Oh, yeah, you can break reputation in a nanosecond, but it takes years to build. Well, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, look, if you, so when you, you know, so I suppose when you when you started, you, you know, one of the initial challenges was 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 finding business, you know, meeting with people. What other challenges did you have to overcome? Time management. Um, I do. Interesting. I mean, part of what I do is also a lot of volunteering, partly right. because I want to, um, partly because it also helps build that network. Um, let's be blunt, you know, not all good deeds are purely good deeds. No, no. Um, and so how do you manage those? And and when you, unfortunately, work is often like buses as well. 
you might go through a lean period and then suddenly you have a whole bunch of work come along at the same time. Yeah. And I'm afraid I am. I will always be one of these people. If it, if the job interests me and I feel I can do a good job, I'm loath to turn it down. Okay. And so it means that I do sometimes have to work weekends, burn the midnight oil. Um, which notice, is probably... notice a raised eyebrow. Notice a raised eyebrow. <laughs> but that's the way I am. And I, you know, I have the option to turn the work down. But on the other hand, you don't know where your next, next okay. pound note is coming so, from. So what have you learned? What have you changed around your time management for the better? I am a strong believer in making lists. Okay. So that you can prioritise. How do you prioritise? What do you do to prioritise your list? Well, you work out what you have to do today. You you know, I put little stars next to it. I'm afraid I still use paper a lot because I, I, I think it's an age thing. But <laughs> and you put a list, you put a list of things that must be done today. Mm -hmm. Come hell or high water. Yeah. And then the when you start the following day, you review that list. If by any slim chance that hell and high water has actually happened <laughs> and something is still on that list, then it takes priority the next day. So it's about managing your workflow so that you can achieve and also setting achievable targets. You know, if you say to someone, they say, I want it tomorrow, and you realistically can't do that because you know how much work you've got on on that list of must be done today. Yeah. You then set client expectations and say, what can I do? Mm. I'm always a strong believer in telling people what you can do, not what you can't do. Yeah. Uh, because so many people do that. Oh, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But why do you need to tell people that? Why don't you tell them what you can do? They're the more interested in what you can do. <laughs> it's changing the narrative, isn't it? It's absolutely yeah. changing the narrative and helping people understand what you're capable. Yeah. What? No. Yeah. What, yeah. What your capabilities are in terms of being able to 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 service yeah. what they need. So no, I'm working out, I've had a project come my way that I'm working on at the moment. It has got a finite deadline, which I can achieve. It's in about six weeks time. But I've said to them, I can't meet you for another couple of weeks because I'm too busy. But what I can do is set a framework of what we need to achieve that, that can then be discussed at the meeting in two weeks time. So again, it's just managing those expectations and managing workflow. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I tend to work with a, you know, either do it, delegate it, or dump it. Or yeah. actually four, defer it or dump it. You know, and the defer and the dump it are normally things that are just there to make me feel good, uh, but not necessarily necessity, the necessity for the business. Correct, yes. Yeah. So so it's it's been it's been brutal. It's been brutal with those priorities is absolutely essential. I guess my I would pick up on the word delegate. Because a lot of people, particularly when they're starting out in business, there are sort of two types of people, those that can't delegate at all or those that, that delegate and think that just divorces them from any level of responsibility. And I think you have to recognise that when you delegate, you shouldn't micromanage, but equally you need to then manage people and your expectations of that person. And that person needs to understand of what's being expected of them. Yeah. Um, Obviously now I'm I'm work for myself and and fundamentally it's just me. Um, my husband does provide some support, but ultimately it's just me. But that that's easier now because. Um, but if I really needed to, I do know people who could help me out and do some of the work for me. But generally speaking, I I tend to do it myself. No, you like it so. I mean, you you very wise words because I mean you're right. I mean it's it's. Um... You, you can either, you know, you, 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 you're people who can't delegate or don't want to delegate because they believe that nobody can do it as well as they can, uh, which is a, a myth. Um, and there's people who delegate, or they don't delegate, but they believe they're delegating, but actually in reality what they're doing is abdicating. Yes. And they abdicate the responsibility to the, to the other person rather than delegate the responsibility to the other person. So they're almost like they wash their hands off it, not my problem anymore, off you go. Uh, which is... Um, which is fitter because at the end of the day they don't get the result that they're looking for. So, um, you know, and then they will ultimately blame the person, but absolutely. you can't blame that person. Yes, they may have some level of responsibility for the failure, but you, as the manager, has to be the person that checks in, progress checks, 
understands whether that person understands what they're being required to do. So it it it, it that's the most difficult part of working life in most cases is management. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And and, and you're right. It's, it's, it's the person who delegates the task is still still retains full responsibility for yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. So look, where, where, where do you see your business in the top, like next three to five years then? Go on. <laughs> I'd love to say I'll be retired, but I'm not sure that's true. Partly because I do love working. I'd like to think I do less in yeah. five years' time than I do okay. now. Okay. Um, whether that happens or not, I wouldn't like to say. But I've reached a stage in my career where I can free will a little bit meaning that I can go, I can just follow the twists and turns of life. Yeah. I don't have to have, you know, I want to be able to sell out in five years' time. I want to float on the stock market. You know, I don't have any of those ambitions anymore. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that true? Yes, it is true, actually. And I think, again, that's one um, advantage of um having been in, in business and working for such a long time. And I also like giving back. So when I do less, I will probably be doing as much, but not probably pay for it. Because <laughs> I do like supporting and helping next generation. Okay. Good. Well, I, 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 I want to jump back a bit. So we, we talked about relationships and finding customers and all this when you're first starting out. You know, you've been, you know, your business has been over three, four years, so you've done a bit of that. How do you how do you stay connected with it with the needs and the feedback of your customers in your business? Well, I suppose the way I've structured who I am and what I do is it's pretty easy to do so. Meaning that as part of my role with the Sustainable Design Collective means that I do a lot of public speaking. Okay. I yep. also get involved in a number of panel discussions, so that automatically keeps me in touch with what's happening in my marketplace. Okay. Um, Similarly, um, quite a bit of my work now is on a retained basis. So therefore, if my client's not happy with me, they're not going to retain my services. Very simple measure, isn't it? Yes. Um, but I do feel um, there's a tremendous responsibility because sustainability is one of those topics that's changing all the time. And the focus is changing and the understanding is changing. And so part of what I do, so for example, I'm also a non-exec director at something called FIRA, which is the Furniture Industry Research Association. Yep. And that keeps my knowledge current as well. It's okay. through all those different connections. I And I do a lot of reading and studying. Um, LinkedIn, love it or loathe it, is um, a useful tool. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, because there's some really interesting articles on there. Um, and, yeah, I subscribe to lots of different um, newsletters and so forth just to keep my knowledge up to date. Okay. Do I know everything about sustainability in the workplace environment? Certainly not. But I will know someone that does if yeah. I don't. Which, which, yeah. is, which is half the battle is, is having that to your network again, isn't it? It's, that, it's yeah. that, those connections. Which kind of leads that nice. I mean, you sort of wrap, wrap us up for the, for the you know, our chat bit. You know, beyond financial success, what what kind of impact do you hope your business will have on on, on you know the community in the world? Well, I suppose I'm fortunate in that working in the environment in which I do, in terms of environmental responsibility and also social value. As I said, sustainability embraces far more than just environmental responsibility. I'd like to think the whole business model is changing a bit rather mm -hmm. than being solely based on economic metrics uh, or yep. financial metrics, I should say. Yep. And I'd like to think that in my small little way, I've helped contribute to that. Okay. Is, so there anything, do... is there anything, have you set yourself any goals around that that you, you want to achieve in the next two, three, four years? Um, what I would really like to see is the, and I do a lot of speaking and a lot of writing on this subject, is the growth of what I call the green economy to maintain everything we own as assets in terms of, let's say, furniture. Okay, my focus is on furniture, is that we keep them in use for longer. We have a real make discard 
make mm. use discard culture and if i can have some impact on that to change that you know i think back to my youth which was albeit a long time ago um we were still at the make do and mend stage in life um yeah. because things were expensive and then when we hit the sort of late 70s early 80s everything became so much cheaper and so you'd buy all this stuff and when you didn't want it anymore you just chucked it away we can't continue doing that and I'd like to think if I achieve one thing is that in my own small way, I contribute to a greater understanding of we can't continue. We can't carry on down this road. What what a great goal and then, you know, a very admirable goal. But I think you're right. You know, I've come from that area where we used to make and mend and, and make do. And, and you're right. We, we Even myself, we've actually moved into this area where, you know, if it doesn't fit anymore or whatever, we just we just discard it. Yes, I think you're absolutely right. I think it's a great goal, an absolutely great goal, and I wish you wish you absolutely every success in the, in achieving that. Joe, this has been fabulous. There's a there's a, there's a You're know, very welcome a world of knowledge and a world of experience, a world of advice in in, in our chat today that I'm sure other people will take loads from. And uh, I just want to thank you for 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 taking the time to come along and talk to me. It's been brilliant. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, and if anybody wishes to find out any more. Um, I'm sure you'll be included details on my website on the podcast. <laughs> I'm sure we will. I'm absolutely sure we will. So yeah, people will know how to get hold of you. Trust me. But, uh, it's been it's been great, Joe. It's been been lovely, Joe. I've had, I've had a blast. So uh, thank you very much, and I'll hopefully speak to you again soon. No problem at all. Thank you. <laughs>